Well, it's time for our last review of May, and today at the Channel Point Sequest of Lee, we're going to be taking a look at East is East, released in 1999. So East is East is a comedy drama film which was directed by Damien O'Donnell. It was written by Ayub Khan Din and based off a stage play that he wrote three years earlier. The film takes place in 1971 and follows a Pakistani father, George, and English mother, Ella, and their seven mixed kids. Upon release, it was critically acclaimed and won the Alexander Corder Award for Best British Film at the BAFTA Awards. And on a budget of £1.9 million, equivalent to $3 million, it made worldwide $30.4 million, which is equivalent to around $50 million nowadays. I do have some opinions on it myself, but first we're going to get into what happened as we review East is East, released in 1999. So at the beginning of our film, we're given a little bit of backstory. In 1937, George Khan, a Muslim from Pakistan, came to England to find work. It was there he met Ella. They fell in love and married in 1946. This film takes place 25 years later. And 25 years later, the two now have seven children, Nazir, Abdul, Tariq, Manir, Salem, Mana, their only daughter, and Sajid. It's a big day for Nazir as he's getting married, only it's not exactly by his choice, it's an arranged marriage. And while his wife-to-be is beautiful, unfortunately for his family he can't go through with it, and he runs out on the marriage. And as a result of this, Nazir is disowned by his father and has to leave his family's home. And now let's jump ahead in time a little bit more, six months later. George and Ella run a fish and chip shop with either Ella's sister or best friend, I'm not sure which, Annie. One of their sons, Tariq, meanwhile, has a secret relationship with a British girl named Stella, closely shadowed by her best friend, Peggy. The kids then go to Islamic teachings, and while Manir still seems invested, the rest of the kids seem disinterested in the religion. It's also found that the youngest, Sajid, has not been circumcised, so George has it done. After this, and seeing how sad her son has become, Ella seems to be questioning her marriage and the choices she's made. But who cares? George bought her a nice barber chair to sit in. That's pretty cool. The family then take a trip out to Bradford, where George meets with a Mr. Shaw, who has two daughters he's looking to wed off. And George then arranges for both Abdul and Tarek to marry them. Speaking of Abdul and Tarek, Abdul comes with Tarek one night as they both sneak off into a disco. Upon coming home, they kick Sajid off the piss bucket, so he goes to use the other piss bucket in his parents' room and accidentally interrupts them having sex. He tries to leave the room, but his hoodie gets stuck in the door, and he overhears George telling Ella about the impending marriage. She's not receptive to this, but George tells her that he'll beat the shit out of her if she tells them before he does. George goes out and buys garments for the wedding, while meanwhile the rest of the family sneak off to a phone box to talk to Nazir. The next day, Sajid tries to sneak a peek at Tarek's penis to see if it's the same as his, and he gets attacked for it, accidentally revealing that he knows about the marriages. And Tarek then finds the garments, and he becomes completely enraged, destroying them and smashing the special watches. Manir attempts to clean things up, but George comes home and finds out. When he refuses to tell George who did it, he beats the shit out of him and drags him to the shop. Elevin sticks up for her son, and he beats the shit out of her too, threatening to kill her if she crosses him again. This is about all that Tara can handle, so him, Salim, Manea, Stella, and Peggy all head to Eccles to find Nazir. And they do find him. Turns out he's a fashion designer now, and he's in a homosexual relationship. And after they tell Nazir what George has done, Nazir takes them all home, preparing to confront him. However, Ella stops him and urges him to go back home, as he will only make things worse. That night, Abdul sneaks off to have his first drink, and his boss and workmates come find him. I only mention this scene, it's not significant at all, but because his boss was played by Gary Lewis, who also ended up being the dad in Billy Elliot, and I thought that was neat. Also that night, Tarek tries to talk his father down, but his father threatens him with a knife, so Tarek's like, fine, I'll do what you want, I'll get married. And the next day, Mr. and Mrs. Shaw and their two daughters all come to the house, and the meeting is extremely awkward, yet cordial, and Ella keeps her composure, even though Mrs. Shaw is rude as shit. However, Salim comes home with a sculpture he's made. It's a sculpture of the female vagina. When Ella steps out of the room and sees the sculpture, they fight over it and accidentally throw it back into the room and it lands right on Mrs. Shaw's lap. Mrs. Shaw then curses their entire family and says, I'd never allow my daughters to marry your sons. And Ella's like, you know what? Fuck you. Fuck all of you. Fuck your daughters. Get the fuck out my house. Enraged at this, George attacks her, but her kids stand up for her. 
Finally seeing that he's turned his whole family away from him, George leaves while Ella berates her kids for standing up for her? What? Ella then goes and finds George in the shop and they have a cup of tea and then the kids play in the street and then the movie just ends. So maybe I'm missing something and I liked the film as a whole. It was nice to see some insight into Pakistani culture. But first off, if I understand the message that they're, you know, confined to this life and she can't really find anyone else. It's too late for her to find anyone else. And they, they just, you guys gotta make do with what you got. I get that. But I'm kind of, maybe it's just me, but I feel like if you're gonna make an hour and a half long film, you should maybe, I don't know, write an ending? <laughs> I mean, that might just be me. And the ending you didn't have, you did have, I didn't like, not just because it wasn't a proper ending, but because like, I mean, it's all, just, she just has Stockholm Syndrome. Like, he beat the shit out of her. He beat the shit out of the kids. And that's just it. He just gets away with it, and she sides with him because she has clear Stockholm Syndrome. And yeah, it, it's majorly fucked up. It's very fucked up ending, very fucked up film, to be honest. Um, my only real gripe is, you know, maybe write an ending. In fairness, there was a sequel, West is West, which came out in 2010, so maybe I'll have to watch that and get some more perspective on what happened next. So how I would summarize this film if you're looking to watch it? Well, it's a very well acted film and you can get some insight on Pakistani culture if you're not aware of it. Um, but this is a film that, in my personal opinion, will more than likely leave you frustrated by the end because they didn't really know how to end it. But I must say, Om Puri, who played George and passed away in 2017, was perfect for this role because in 2013, his wife filed for divorce after an allegation of domestic violence. But that is going to do it for my review of East is East. I definitely will be looking at that sequel film West is West sometime in the future because I'd like to see what happens next. I, I think maybe seeing what happens next uh, will give me maybe some new perspective on this, but for now the ending just kind of left me frustrated, but maybe the sequel will clear some things up. But that is going to do it for my review of East is East. Let me know what you thought of the film, and thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, be sure to leave it a like. If you want to follow any of my social media links, uh, they are all in the description down below. Thank you to all my patrons also listed in the video description. I appreciate you guys for supporting me and my channel. So all that being said though, my name is Noah Taff, this has been my review of East is East, released in 1999, I'll see you guys next time, bye!